What if everything you know to be true was just one big lie? So the long-awaited season premiere episode of Silo Season 2 is finally here. The WGA and SAG AFTRA strikes delayed its release from the original date in 2023, but now we finally get to find out Juliet's faith after she was unwillingly forced out of the silo into the toxic environment outside. The title of episode 1 is The Engineer. Juliet, played by Rebecca Ferguson, is an engineer in the down deep, and we will more than likely get to see her use her skills in this episode. And I'm not sure if you guys remembered this or not, but we really didn't get to see a whole lot of Juliet inception period as an engineer when she first wanted to go down there when she was young. We only really got to explore her later days as an engineer and we got to see how a lot of that inspiration actually came from her mom. But now with episode 1 of season 2 we finally get to get into more of those younger days of her as an engineer. So in the finale of season 1 in her position as sheriff, while relentlessly investigating the death of her lover George, Juliet discovered too many secrets of the silo. In Tim Robbins character Bernard, the head of IT and the new mayor secretly runs the silo and needed to get rid of her. So he falsely accused her of saying she wanted to go outside where death is imminent. No one has ever survived going outside of the silo. As stated in the pact, when someone says they want to leave the silo, it is irrevocable, meaning they say the words, I want to go out. And once they say that, well, you gotta send their ass out. Season one left her as she was compelled outside, finding out the atmosphere was indeed toxic. And we also got to find out about the whole augmented reality thing, which we did find out that Juliet didn't clean, but that display was there, so she would clean. But Juliet ended up surviving because of the heat tape that sealed any openings in her contaminant suit, provided by her longtime friend Walker with some help from her ex instead of using the tape usually used by IT. So the episode opens with a boy we've never seen before running through the dark halls. He passes by a propaganda poster thanking the founders, defaced with graffiti that says liars, truth now, and fuck. Written over to read F the founders, which you know, I can't be throwing around the F word too much, you know, YouTube gets a little sensitive about that. But anyway, so the boy pushes through a large group of people huddled in the stairwell, which we now recognize as a silo, and is carrying a message for his dad from engineering. His father's a sheriff, and the message scrawled up in a piece of paper that he gives him reads, generator will flood in 15 minutes. The generator runs all power in the silo, and is cooled with water from the down deep. If the water pumps are allowed to stop, it would flood several levels of the silo, and all who live there would drown. So the sheriff announces five bells. As the bells ring out, the group readies for an attack on a small group barricaded on the other side of a destroyed bridge. The small group has guns, but the large group of rebels are armed only with pipes and tools. After a metal plank is lowered across the bridge span, the attacking rebels cry freedom, and as they charge across they are met with gunfire. Many of the attackers are killed, but the number is so overwhelming that the group on the other side just falls back and the rebels are victorious. After the battle, the sheriff has survived and wonders why he, presumably from the group they attacked, wouldn't open the door, and his wife responds because he was told not to. We know from the pact that you can not open the door to a silo because the outside contamination would kill everyone inside. The only way outside is through a small closed contamination airlock. He asked her if she thinks Russell was lying, and at this time we don't know who Russell is, but we can assume that he probably told them that the outside was not toxic just like Alice believed in Juliet's silo. And he tells her that there's one way to find out, and if Russell was lying, then they're all dead anyway. Basically hinting at the fact that if management had survived, any rebels would be sent out to clean to their death, and also there's the fact that the generator has been flooded and the silo may no longer be able to sustain life for a large number of people anyway. So yeah, they kind of shit out of luck both ways. The sheriff carrying a green flag leads the rebels through the doors. They open a decontamination airlock, doors exposing the silo to the outside air, and the group charges up the ramp to the surface as they let out cries of excitement. Then in current time outside, we see the same green flag, now old and tattered, planted in the ground of a barren landscape and flapping in the wind. Juliet approaches in her container contaminant suit right where we left her last season. As she examines the ground by the flag, we can see skeletonized remains and scraps of clothing. Then there's a body of an adult and a child that are huddled on the ground. And we can probably make the assumption that this is the sheriff's son who we saw bring him the note from engineering. Now we don't exactly know how long ago they died and how the atmosphere affects the dead. It could have technically been a month ago or it could have been decades ago. We don't really know whether or not if the atmosphere outside would speed up the decomposing process. As Juliet reaches the top of the berm that surrounds this 
silo, she sees hundreds of more dead bodies. There's actually so many dead bodies as she approaches the entrance that she cannot avoid stepping on and crushing them as she walks. I mean, bodies are everywhere, and it's pretty clear that the rebels did not survive their charge outside. This silo entrance was left cracked open with a pile of dead bodies surrounding it. Juliet drops down in the door to the ramp, falling over mass skeletal remains. Then she makes her way down the ramp, still covered everywhere with skeletons that never made it out, or maybe possibly trying to get back in, which is very possible after they probably saw everyone dropping to their knees and coughing and, and dying. But Juliet finds a hand crank lantern and a crowbar near the first inner door to the decontamination airlock. The outer door is open, but the inner door is locked. And from the books, we know that it's set to lock automatically. So once everyone got outside and started panicking and possibly tried to get back inside, it was too late. Using the crowbar with much difficulty, Juliet is able to pry the door open. Pressurized air pours out, so we know that this was sealed from the outside air. Inside, we see bars from a jail cell, the same one she would have been held in in her silo before she was forced outside to clean. After all of that exertion and effort, the tape around her wrist has unraveled, and she panics, worried about the contamination from the toxic air outside. As she runs through the abandoned silo, we see the observation window in the cafeteria is clouded over with debris on the sensor, and lies is written across the glitching screen. And this indicates that there is still some power working in the silo because the screen is a projection from the sensor outside. Grabbing tools and some thermoses, she runs down the silo staircase and begins to gasp for air as the oxygen in her suit is depleted. Struggling and unable to remove her helmet, she smashes the faceplate glass with the tools she's found and realizes the air is breathable. And luckily for Julie, she didn't pass out, but it was more than likely rancid with the smell of death inside of that silo. But at least it was breathable and contained oxygen. After pouring coffee from the thermoses over herself to dilute any contaminants on the suit, she rips it off. With a flashlight she found, Juliet wanders around and explores the abandoned silo. This silo is eerily similar to her own, but just empty. At this point, she has not been able to find anyone here alive. Everything is in disrepair and covered in dust. In an apartment, she smashes a mirror and finds a camera, confirming that this silo too has been secretly monitored by IT, just like her silo. But she's eventually able to find a change of clothes in a closet and continues to explore. As she reaches the main silo shaft, we flash back to when Juliet was a kid, being beckoned by a young Shirley not to be late. Shirley introduces her to the workers in recycling, telling them she just moved down from the mids. There are 12 recycling stations in the silo, with access to the trash chute. Juliet learns her new job, separating out salvageable trash and recycling, and she also finds out that the really good stuff they find ends up going to Walker. Back in present day, Juliet's exploring takes her to the farms, where all the crops are dead and there's nothing to eat. And luckily, she does stumble upon a leaking irrigation pipe and she is now able to fill a container with drinking water. Then we get this really cool transition effect where we go to young Juliet who's guzzling down water in the punishing heat of recycling. On the recycling belt she finds a discarded toy and asks if she can keep it and fix it. Afterwards Shirley invites Juliet to stay with her and her dad but Juliet declines. She's not too sure about these new people just yet. Then working on the toy in Walker's apartment Walker tells her that it will get lonely with no friends and then Walker complains about Juliet wasting her time on the toy and she tells Juliet that she works for her and the silo but mainly her and Juliet muses that it's been a while since she had a friend after her mom died. She explains how the other kids avoided her after her mother's suicide and we're also aware from last season that Juliet's brother also died and she left her father blaming him for her mother's death. We understand that Juliet is truly alone. Walker eventually tells her about a dream she had when she was sick and how she believed that she was all alone in the silo and it was the worst feeling she ever had. She basically just tries to hit Juliet with a little bit of wisdom on the importance of friendship. Then we later jump to Juliet in recycling who's showing shirt the toy that she had managed to repair and gifts it to her, making a gesture of friendship. Initially, Shirley coldly rejected the gift. After all, it is just a toy. But eventually, she does end up changing her mind and accepts it after she realizes the effort that Juliet put into it. Present day Juliet sees the broken bridge where the past battle we saw earlier took place. As she stands on one side of the bridge span, she hears a repetitive clanking noise on the other side. She calls out, but no one answers. And also, I forgot to mention that throughout this episode, there are some very interesting characters camera shots that imply that Julie is being watched. It doesn't happen a lot throughout the episode, but there are a few shots here and there that implies that someone's standing behind some sort of pillar or area above Julie as she continues to explore the silo. 
I believe it happened initially when she first got into the silo and she was ripping off her suit, and now it's happening again at the point where she's observing the broken bridge, so I personally believe that this is something to keep in mind. Then she gathers rope used to hang bodies over the side of the bridge guardrails and lowers herself onto the broken bridge below. As she tries to swing to the edge, the rope breaks and she plummets down the silo shaft, luckily landing in water that had flooded the lower levels. Flailing to survive, she grabs for something floating to hold on to, and it's clear that Juliet cannot swim, which we kind of sort of knew already from season one. They sort of hinted at her fear of water, so she crawls up onto the stair steps and screams in frustration at her failure. Back at the apartment from before, she changes into a dry set of clothes and wraps up her bloody injured arm. Then we see young Juliet and Shirley sneak into a secret flooded cavern at the very bottom of the silo where the giant digger was abandoned. This is the same secret chamber George used to take her to for private getaways in the first season. Now in the book series, George did indeed use this cavernous chamber as a workspace where he kept illegal relics, but he never took Juliet there. She didn't go there as a child and didn't discover this secret cavern until the end of the trilogy. With its references in both both this season and the last, it looks to play a much more prominent role in the show. The poster for season 2 shows Juliet submerged in water, and you have to remember that George told her about a door under the water in her cabin in her silo that she tried and failed to reach after his death. Perhaps she'll try to reach that door again in this silo. They look at graffiti written on the stone walls and Shirley tells her how she thinks it was there before the rebellion. There are stories of the rebellion, but it was 140 years before and no one who was alive through the rebellion is still alive today. But they commemorate defeating the rebels every year with the Freedom Day celebration. They go on to bond as Shirley tells her how she discovered this place and then they end up throwing stones in the water below and eventually we're able to see that Juliet is finally making a friend. Then we cut back to present day Juliet who's gathering pipes and potential building materials from around the silo. She engineers and constructs a ladder to span across the broken bridge. Attaching a rope winch to the bridge above, she raises the ladder and swings it over the open span. Tethering herself by rope to avoid another fall to the bottom, she begins cautiously navigating across the ladder. The ladder begins to fall apart and she races to the other side, grabbing the broken bridge edge just in time before the whole ladder falls to the ground far below. Eventually, Juliet Juliet manages to hoist herself up and cuts the rope tether which is too short, finally safely making it across. And I don't really have a strong issue with this scene, but I do have an issue with this scene. So Juliet is an engineer and she was able to find all the materials she needed to make a bridge. The one thing I personally didn't like about this scene and I didn't think it made much sense, which is the fact that Juliet constructed a bridge but she didn't test it to see if it could hold her weight. As she begins to use the bridge, it almost immediately begins to fall apart. And I thought it was a little weird that she just didn't use it first to test her weight. She could have set it up on the slope on the stairs or laid it across the guardrails on the bridge and just seeing if standing on it alone would have caused it to break. That would have allowed her to know immediately if the bridge was strong enough to hold her up because I would assume that she wants to be able to use something that she could use back and forth to get across. But that was my only issue with that part was that Julie didn't do the obvious testing by just seeing if it would hold her weight. But anyway, following the clanking sound that started this quest, Juliet walks through halls cluttered with the breeze from the former barricade of the battle, and as she enters the room where the sound is coming from, the wall behind her has the word truth written by hand, and Juliet's hope of finding someone is deflated as the sound turns out to be just a badge bouncing off an old fan that's running. Now stuck on the other side of the broken bridge, Juliet looks for a way back. She finds empty barrel drums and a large metal plank, which looks like it was used as some sort of barrier or maybe someone who's already there was using it as a temporary bridge, who knows. But she weighs the back side of the plank with sandbags to keep it down on top of the barrels as she goes to roll the plank across the open area of the bridge and it ends up falling perfectly in place. The new temporary bridge is much sturdier and should now prove to be a more permanent solution. Which I'm gonna stick with the fact that I did give Juliet shit earlier, but at least now she has a better solution. She grabs her backpack and starts to cross when she is stopped cold by the sound of the song Moon River. She turns back Back around and follows the music. She follows a hallway that has way more light than anywhere else she's seen in the silo to a door at the end. Through the door she sees another door, cracked open and streaming with glowing light. The sound of the music is much louder now, telling us that she's going in the right direction. She walks past dead bodies but these don't look as decomposed as the ones outside. Did the harsh environment ravage those quicker or were these people alive longer or were these bodies that were more recently killed? Kind of brings forth the question. She finds a closed round door with 
the door viewer slot. It's locked and there's a lighted up keypad next to it. She yanks on it and tries to open it, but it's locked solidly. Giving up, she turns and begins to walk away. Someone shouts, hey, and she whips around to find the door viewer open, and we see a man played by Steve Zahn just staring at her. The stranger tells her, good, you heard the music. He informs her if she tries to open the door again, he's going to kill her. And snaps the door viewer closed, and now all we know about this stranger is that he loves Moon River, has heterochromia, seems somewhat childlike, and wants to be left alone. Also, if you haven't read the books, you know that this character's name is Solo. In the book Wool, Juliet's introduction to this inhabitant of the silo is not as pleasant as the lure of a melodic song. The sound of footsteps leads to a frantic chase and bloody knife fight, so let's hope that once they finally meet, it isn't as violent. Juliet will now have to calculate her next move. This is the only person she's found in the abandoned silo, and he seems to have survived just fine. Soon she will need food and more water, and he's likely her only hope. Now just to convince him not to kill her. That should be easy enough. <laughs> Silo Season 1 was based on the first half of the book Wool in the series by Hugh Howey. The showrunner Graham Yost explained that Season 2 will be based on the second half of the book. The first episode focused on what happened to Juliet after she left the original Silo. And if we continue with the story as we follow Juliet, future episodes will also take us back to the original Silo to determine the fallout with the residents after they saw that Juliet survived outside, which keep in mind is something that no one has done before. So the residents of that Silo is definitely thinking, does this mean that it's safe? outside and will this spur another rebellion well let's just go back and look at the hints on the season two poster if you look down below that kind of looks like we have a rebellion on our hands so let's just see how things pan out this season for season two of silo but i am so excited that this show is back i really enjoyed the first season i'm gonna try to be pretty informative this season with the deviations from the show versus the novel and i can promise you guys that you won't have any spoilers to worry about as i cover season two only deviations and things that can add a little bit more context to certain scenes that we won't end up further exploring in the show more than likely but anyway if you guys enjoyed the recap you know exactly what to do and as always, thank you for watching.